Guys, welcome back to Spank Ranch Garage. It's another side job Saturday. Today we've got a pretty straightforward one, we'll say. Uh, this is a turbo manifold off of Miata. My good friend Alex, uh, he is the king of Miatas worldwide, not just in the US. Anyway, he asked me if I could machine both sides of this manifold. He's putting a new turbo on his car, wants to make sure everything's flat, it's gonna seal correctly. And I said, yeah, let's do it. So right off the bat, this is actually a very high quality manifold by Kraken or something. I don't know anything about Miatas, so I don't know the brand, but um, the casting is very good. The relief cuts are nice. The way this collector merges in here is really, really good for a cast manifold. This is a great design. Uh, I would be happy to run something like this on my BMW, but unfortunately, not aware of anything cast that's that nice for them. Now, one of the things that's gonna make this manifold a pleasure to cut, hopefully, is that the turbo flange surface and the cylinder head flange surface are parallel and on the same plane. So that should make fixturing this one fairly easy. These things aren't very complicated to resurface, but really the tricky part comes into some of the custom tubular ones where you've got flanges on different planes and fixturing them up and keeping them correct in the machine is a bit of a challenge. But with these being parallel, we're gonna start with the turbo side, flip it over, hit the engine side. Let's do it. I'm gonna use a couple tricks to fixture this one. One, make sure the bottom of my vise is clean. I'm gonna put two, one, two, three blocks down, just like that. And then we'll rest the manifold up on top. I don't have a ton of clamping surface on this back side here, because you just have the two high spots on this flange. So I'm going to use a piece of sandpaper with the backing towards the vise jaw, like this, to give me a little extra grip on this part. I find it really does help with clamping cast parts. And I wanna put a little tension on this and just see how it feels. If it feels good, we'll probably run it. Another thing I do when I'm clamping raw castings like this is if I didn't like the surface contact I have on the moving vise jaw, I will put a piece of aluminum welding wire in here and then clamp that. The aluminum wire will crush and deform to give me better surface area on this flange to kind of hold it all in. Um, just with a gentle snug on this though, this really does feel good. So I'm confident that's enough grip to do what we gotta do. Now, just like anything, we're not going to assume that this flange is parallel, so we will give it a sweep and see how close we are. This will tell us how much we're gonna be taking off anyway. She's five thousandths high in the front here. She's going even higher this way, coming back down, so there is actually some flatness issue along here. Oh wow, look at that, quite a bit actually. And she's pretty good there. So what that told me is I'm, I'm zero pointed here and here. I'm 5,000 high here and about 3,000 high here. So in order to take the minimum off of this flange to get it straight, I want to bump this up two or three thousandths. Pretty much make a straight line here. You're still going to have some well, more of a, a, bit, a rainbow or banana in the middle here. And then this will kind of shake out to what it is. I'm going to tap this around a little. Can you guys see that indicator? Probably not. I do apologize with the yellow indicator face. I will not be buying another one of those for filming. All right, look at that, ear within two thou, up that side. Coming across the front here. Got a two thou high spot. Three thou, back down to one. And then as we creep back here, here about two and a half, back down to one. So I wanna bring this down a smidge, see that? Now in, in all realism here, I could have just sent this thing, whacked five thousandths off the top and it wouldn't matter, but you try to do better with every job you do. That looks really good. I don't think I've surfaced any cast iron or cast steel yet with this tool. So that'll be a cool and exciting experience. I always bring the table up, keep the quill almost all the way collapsed. That way we're using the machine in its stiffer form because this thing will start ringing pretty good. Not that it affects the surface finish a lot, but like I said, if we can do better, we got to try to do better. I 
5,000 depth of cut, 700 RPMs, and one inch per minute feed. And you can see that we didn't get there. So this cleaned up really nice, but we've got a low spot back here, kind of as we expected. So we're flat across the flange now, but we need to take another cut. See the low spot here. Surface finish, really nice. Definitely something to be happy with, especially for a turbo manifold. All right, there we are. That cleaned up really good. Let's flip her over and get the head flange done. So, fixturing the other side here, same kind of deal. Sandpaper on the fixed jaw, one, two, three blocks on our freshly machined turbo flange, and then uh, got a three quarter inch wrench in there because I had to get on the back side of the turbo flange but not interfere with the runners and I had it handy and it fits well. I'd be surprised if this goes as well because of the way that this flange already has its relief cuts in it. I think we're gonna get some vibration here and some ringing, but maybe not too much. I don't know. You don't know until you try. So now that this thing's clamped, same process, pull the fly cutter out, put the indicator on, make sure we're flat, and then machine it up. And we got quite a bit of action on this. As long as she ain't moving in the vise, we are all good. That looks really good that way. Wow. I mean, that's spot on. It gets, yeah, it really gets, is that high or low there? It gets really high here. So we're gonna take a heavy cut on that. The funny thing is, is like, yeah, it's nice having a mill to do this with, but if I had to do this professionally, um, as my livelihood, a big belt sander would be, that'd be the tool of choice for this. Uh, you just have so much more flexibility with different angles and none of this really has to be precise. Really a belt sander would be nice. You could just sit this thing on there and sand away until it's flat. Where in a mill, you've got to set it up so perfectly to make sure you're not taking off too much to make it flat. It just seems more difficult. But in this case, it works. I've done a couple this way. I think we'll have great results with this one as well. So that turned out awesome. Absolutely awesome. She's flat at only 10 thousandths. It didn't ring too bad either. Um, I can't complain about that. Well guys, that wraps up another side job Saturday. This exhaust manifold turned out awesome. I'm sure the owner is gonna be really happy with it. Went as I expected. Luckily, it wasn't too bad of a job. I didn't charge much for it, but it's a good homie of mine. If you got any questions regarding this kind of stuff, post them in the comments. Thanks for watching Side Job Saturday. I'll see you next time on Spank Ranch Garage.